Hello, this is Matthew Randall, and welcome to uh, Procedural Shading Recipes. Um, so in this uh, uh, talk, what I want to talk about is uh, the Flakes node that comes with um, Arnold, uh, and how we can actually use that uh, to create both a glitter effect and a kind of metallic paint effect. Okay, so we'll start off with a glitter effect. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to use this uh, uh, pot here and apply a, a, or a vase, sorry, and apply a new material to it. And what I want to do is kind of make this vase look like it's kind of covered in, in glitter. Okay, so I'm going to go, um, uh, so I'm going to just zoom in on this a little bit here. Okay, there we go just so you can kind of see the surface in a bit more detail. Um, I've just set up my, I've docked my hyper shade in this side here. Uh, and uh, uh, this is all just being lit by um, uh, this HDR image here. Okay, right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, I'm just going to assign a new material, assign new material. Um, and I'm just going to go shader, uh, standard AI, sorry, AI standard surface shader. So the Ar standard Arnold surface shader. OK, uh, and then what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to set a, um, uh, a, a base color uh, so you can see all the attributes of the node that we've got selected in our hyper shade here. So I'm going to set a base color um, I'm going to set up, I'm thinking like green, let's go for green, bright green. Let's have a look how that looks. Something like that, okay. Uh, and then what I want to do is set the specular colors to the same color. So I'm just going to use the pipette, sample that so it's all set to the same color, okay. Um, then what we're going to do is um, uh, so the glitter effect is going to be kind of like a dielectric effect. Um, so what we mean by that is uh, we want our um, uh, we want to turn up the metalness uh, right up to a uh, hundred percent, okay. Uh, or, or to one, sorry, um, uh, for our glitter effect to work. So let's bring in this uh, flake node and see what this looks like. So to bring in a node, I'm just going to tap into an empty area in our graph here. And um, if you don't see this uh, uh, appear, um, you can just uh, you can uh, select the material. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this material as well. So I'm going to call it glitter. Okay. So you can see we've got the glitter material here, and you can just select it and just go. Uh, graph input output connections and it will appear here for you. Okay, let's just move these to the side. Okay, great. So I want to add a new node here. I'm just going to go tab and I'm going to go uh, flake. Okay, so this is the AI flakes node. Okay, um, and what this does is it adds kind of flakes to our surface, um, uh, to the surface of the vase. Um, uh, yeah, basically, so, so that we get this kind of glitter effect. Great, okay. So um, uh, what we want to do is connect this to our normal camera. So effectively, uh, these flakes will be, uh, uh, our normals will be um, adjusted to kind of make it look like there's flakes on the surface of this vase now. Okay, let's see what this looks like. So uh, what I'm going to do is in this render here, I'm going to go and uh, select Arnold uh, so that we're rendering in Arnold. Okay, so here we are. We've got a kind of initial sort of starting point here. Um, and first thing I want to do is I want to look at this flake node and I want to just adjust the uh, uh, the scale of these flakes, okay? Because these are quite big flakes at the moment. Um, and again, this might be the look that you're looking for, but we're trying to create like a glitter look. So obviously fine flakes, okay? So let's go and put this down to uh, 0 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. Give it a moment. Okay, so we've got much finer uh, flakes there that we can use for our glitter. Um, what we also want to do then is we want um, the flakes to have like a 3D kind of feel to it. Oh, we want the flakes to be really dense, so we want to turn density right up to one. Okay. Um, we want. Um, uh, uh, we want the flakes to have like a 3D feel to them, so we don't want them just to just sort of be flat flakes on the surface. We want them to kind of come out a little bit and have a 3D feel to them. So in this case, we're going to add a depth of one. Okay, so we give the flakes some depth, uh, and we can also set a step size as well, um, 
which just makes it, it makes the flakes use that depth. So I'm going to go and set a step size, set, set, set a step size of one as well. Okay. Uh, also, I want my flakes to be kind of quite random, so I'm going to make them kind of look a bit more random here. Here we go. Okay, and let's see what that render looks like. Okay, so this is our initial glitter look that we've got. Um, by the way, um, uh, just so you can get an idea of the settings I'm using in my Arnold render, um, uh, these are the settings that I'm using here. Um, uh, notice I've put the camera AA up quite a lot, um, and actually the, the, the flake node does really rely on the camera AA. Um, so that's really important to have that up quite high in order to kind of uh, get the details of the flakes uh, coming out. Okay, uh, so that's the thing I would point out to you. And obviously I've tried to keep everything reasonably low so that we can have a kind of reasonably quick updates uh, in our Arnold renderer here. Okay, so um, where can we take this now? Right, what I want to do is uh, if we just pull up this screen here, um, what we want to do is just think about what's going on here. So here we have our base color at the bottom here and so imagine this is our surface here and these are the layers that are on our surface and this is the light that's coming in so we've got our base layer here uh, and what we have is um, uh, this is uh, we have our specular layer here and we've got our pigment uh, for our specular here so we've got our base color our specular uh, pigment here that the light's hitting and then on top of that are the flakes okay so we've got our base our specular our flakes and then on top of the flakes we have our coat uh, uh, layer as well okay and the coat is like a kind of uh, like a secondary specular layer but you can kind of look at it as a, a kind of like a, uh, a a lacquer that you can put on top of the flakes okay so what does all this mean then um, if we go back into Maya then what we can do is we could use the coat to kind of make this look um, uh, uh, like a kind of uh, like a lacquered effect, almost like a kind of painted glitter effect. So I'm going to go into coat. I want the coat to be set to the same color again. So I'm just going to click on the pipette and set the coat to here. I'm going to turn the weight up to 100. And you can see that the coat just adds a kind of lacquered effect to our, our glitter here. Okay. But we can also take this further because if we go into the coat, what you'll see is the coat. Um, uh, so whereas um, we've plugged this into, you know, we've plugged this flake into our normal camera at the moment. And obviously the normals affect the specular layer, but they don't affect uh, this coat layer. OK, um, uh, the coat layer has its own normals here. Uh, just to show you, if I go into geometry, you can see that the, the, the AI flakes is plugged into this as we, you know, because we pulled this in. We plugged it in there, okay? Um, so yeah, it has its own normal layer. And what we can do is apply this flakes to that normal layer as well. And um, now it's not immediately um, obvious where that is here. Um, so what we can do is we can just drag a, a line out here, plug that into uh, this point here. Uh, and what we're going to do is it allow us to, basically what this allows us to do is access attributes that we can't see in here. So what, what, what they've done in Maya is um, rather than list all the attributes and make this kind of node really cumbersome to, 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 to look at and work with, um, they've kind of got rid of nodes that you're less likely to use. Okay, And this is one of them. So we, we drag it onto here. So to access those nodes, we drag onto this uh, this point onto here. And then we can just click other. In fact, I'll just do it again just to show you. Drag this point. Ooh. Do it again. Sorry, the color out. Sorry, drag this point here onto here. Then we click other, and you'll see in here, uh, if I go down, we've got uh, coat normal. Okay, so that's the normals for that coat. Okay. And kind of what you're doing is adding another layer. What you're doing is you're 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 making these flakes affect another layer of uh, normals uh, on this vase, so that you should kind of get a more kind of um, sort of stronger uh, glitter effect. So I'm just going to pause it while that renders. So yeah, as you can see with this render, you can see it's giving you a more natural looking glitter effect than we did when we were just applying it uh, uh, this to just the, the, the base normals, okay? Um, so that's as far as I want to go with glitter. Now what I want to do is have a look at how we can use this flakes node then to kind of create like a metallic paint um, 
uh, 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 texture okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn uh, switch this render back to viewport 2.0 and then just create a new um, uh, material here okay so I'm just going to go uh, assign uh, assign new material here we go again uh, AI standard surface shader, that's what we're using here. And now it's got both of these uh, materials that are up here that we've created. And in fact, what I'm going to do is just rename this quickly um, Blue uh, Metallic. Okay. Um, it's got both the glitter and the blue metallic up on the screen at the same time. And that's, that's obviously going to get things confused. So what we can do is we can just go graph, clear the graph. I can select this blue metallic material and then just go graph input output connection. So we're just looking at this uh, metallic material now. Okay. Okay, so coming back to again to our um, diagram here, one of the things what we want to understand is what we're going to do is we're going to put these flakes on here uh, and obviously um, uh, 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 and we're going to add the flakes on top. Uh, and again, they'll be added as normals. So that'll create kind of a rough surface on top of our specular surface. Now, obviously, with a metallic paint, we want that to be like really glossy. That, you know, metallic paint is a very glossy finish. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, it has no roughness at all. So to create that glossiness, that's all going to come from the coat. OK, so what we want is a fairly rough specular surface that we can apply our flakes to. And then we're going to create a really smooth coat on top of that to give us our shiny paint. Uh, look finish. Okay, so let's go back into Maya. And um, so, in, in, with with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set. Um, uh, so I'm going to set my base weight up to one. Uh, I'm going to pick out a color. Uh, I want this sort of nice kind of teal color here. I'm going to get go for that. Okay, um, and then what we're going to do is again. This is a this is a um, a, a, a conductive surface. Uh, not a dielectric surface. Uh, in fact, I think I said glitter was dielectric surface. It's not. It's a conductive surface. So we want we want the metalness turned right up. Okay. Uh, uh, in this case. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to uh, turn up the roughness on our specular. Um, not right up. Something like that. Okay. Um, and then what we want to do is uh, apply a coat to it. In fact, actually. Um, I want this base color just to remain white. In fact, so I am just going to put that back to white, that color, and I want my I want my color to come entirely from this coat. So I'm going to select the teal here. Okay, I think these are the same color. Okay, let's go for that. Select my teal here, and I'm going to turn that right up. Okay, and uh, I'll give it a little bit of roughness just to make it kind of look a bit more natural. So what you should see is a kind of specular, shiny sort of painted surface. Uh, I'm just going to turn my renderer back on. Okay, um, and all of that glossiness is coming from uh, this coat layer uh, that we've applied here. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to add a flakes node to. Uh, give this paint a more metallic feel. So I'm going to tab flakes. Here we go. Um, and I'm going to uh, plug the out uh, sorry the out color into the normal. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be applying the out color here to the uh, uh, the coat normal because I want that coat to remain smooth in order to get this sort of metallic paint effect. Okay. Uh, again, we're going to go into we're going to look at these uh, flake settings now. So again, we want to kind of reduce the size of these flakes. So I'm just going to go uh, 0.1, uh, and we want the we want this to be fairly dense. So I want there to be some fairly dense flakes here. Now, this time, I'm not using the flakes really to kind of create, you know, where we were trying to create like a glitter effect before. And we wanted to have like a kind of 3D texture where the glitter is kind of stuck to the surface. Um, I don't want that now. So I'm going to leave the step and the depth to zero. And then the normals, the normals really kind of dictate the prominence of uh, the flakes, so how strong the flakes are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, just reduce those flakes down a bit. Okay. Something along those lines. Okay. And I'm just going to pause while it renders so we can see what that looks like. 
Okay, so I, I can see the um, the metallicness is kind of coming through, but I'm wondering if it'll come through a little bit stronger if I just increase the size of the flakes. So I'm just going to double the size of the flakes, put them at 0 .02. Uh, uh, and I might just make the normals a little bit bigger, but not too much. Okay, so this is the size of the flakes. Uh, this normal randomness, what this is doing is it's 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 randomly positioning. Uh, it, it's the amount of randomness um, uh, or angle. It, it's it's the the variation in angle at which these flakes will be applied. Okay, so so a, a bigger variation will make the flakes kind of pick up the light more. Okay, so I think I think this metallicness is coming through a little bit more. Uh, with the slightly larger flake. So we're going to stick with that, okay? Um, now what I want to do is, uh, so that's kind of a, 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 a nice sort of metallic look. We can actually kind of uh, uh, make this look a little bit better. So quite often when you're doing procedural shading, a really good way of making things look kind of better or, or more natural uh, is by layering things up. So what we could do is we could just we could actually take uh, uh, create another flake node here and just layer that up just to kind of give a more natural effect. So um, what I'm going to do here is create another flake node which is going to have fewer flakes, but they will be um, uh, but they will be uh, they'll have a larger normal. So it should kind of be a bit more prominent. Okay. So let's try that. Um, I'm just going to take this flake node that we've already got. I'm just going to go Control D to duplicate it. Uh, and what I'll do is I will just plug. Uh, I'm just going to plug this for the moment. I'm just going to plug this into the flake, this new flake node here. Okay. Uh, I could name them. It's always a good, 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 uh, good, good idea to name things. So I'm going to call this um, small flakes, and I'm going to call this one big flakes. Although I don't. I don't know if they are big flakes, but anyway, I'm going to call it big flakes. Okay. Um, okay. So with the big flakes, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the density. Um, I might make the density a little bit bigger than that. Reduce the density and then up the, uh, uh, the normal randomness. Okay. Let's see what effect that has. So you can see this is giving us kind of uh, more prominent flakes, but but less sort of dense. Um, ironically, even though I've called it big flakes, I might actually just see if this actually um, uh, uh, should be called, uh, actually should have uh, look better with smaller flakes. So I'm just gonna make the flakes smaller here and see what that looks like. Again, I'll just pause the render. Yeah, I quite like that. I might actually just make it a little bit denser. Um, so I'm just gonna click on, move up the density a little bit. See what that looks like. Uh, it's very easy to get carried away with these things when you're tuning them and actually become a little bit too aggressive. Remember, we are trying to create quite subtle effects here. Uh, I'm not actually using a photo reference. Um, another good practice is obviously to have a photo reference, a picture of the painted surface you're trying to create so you can kind of match it up a bit more accurately. Again, I'll pause while this renders. Okay, so I, I quite like this effect. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is actually combine these two together. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the render so that I can get a bit of processing power back okay uh, so in my um, uh, hypergraph I'm going to add a new node to combine these together so it's going to be I'm going to go tab and it's called uh, mix node uh, or uh, AI mix shader let's bring that in and basically what we can do is just take two uh, so what the mix shader does uh, you can't quite see that but it actually just bring in its own kind of um, uh, render node here we don't need that okay we're going to get rid of that uh, we just need the actual mix shader node here. Okay, uh, what we can do is we can plug this into shader one, plug this into shader two, and then we can plug this into. Uh, so that's going to combine the two shaders together, and then we just plug that into the normal camera. Uh, just want to look at this. Uh, if we click on here, we want to change the blend, the mode from blending. So what what the blend just means it's kind of blending them averaging them together we don't want that to happen actually with these are light sources so we actually want to add them uh, so we just click on here and just say hey we just want to add add these normals together uh, uh, to create the end result okay uh, keep the mix weight as it is and let's render and see what we've got okay and I'm going to pause it okay and so with the two uh, flakes uh, combined 
Um, hopefully you agree that kind of gives us a more natural looking result. I'm, I'm kind of happy with the result I'm getting there. And that feels like quite a convincing sort of metallic paint uh, uh, finish to me. So again, it's that idea by layering things up uh, with slightly different parameters or contrasting parameters, you can end up getting quite a natural, uh, uh, that can give you quite a natural result. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave it there. And uh, I